Witness, please. Yes, Your Honor, the defense calls Dr. Tory Lee to the stand. Tory Lee, please report to the stand. Please follow me. Please stand there. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you are about to give will truthfully conform to the facts and rules of the mock trial competition? I do. Please state your first and last name, spelling out your last name for the record. Tori Lee, L E D. Please be seated. And for sworn purposes, my name is Wade Rianda. Once again, Your Honor, my name is Patrick Briley, and for the convenience of the court, this witness's statement can be found starting on page 41. May I proceed? Yes. Good afternoon, Dr. Lee. Good afternoon. Please introduce yourself for the court. My name is Tori Lee, and I'm an independent forensic pathologist. Can you describe your experience for the court? Yes, I received my medical degree from Peaceville State University. I've spent 14 years as a forensics expert in San Francisco, and since then I have started my own consulting firm for forensics. And how are you involved in this case? I was asked to evaluate and determine the cause of death in this case, and so I reviewed all medical and police records. I also examined all physical evidence with the exception of the victim's body. And was Dr. Morrison's report involved in that evidence? Yes, it was. Now, Dr. Morrison opines that the blood on the defendant's, the defendant's belongings was a result of Ms. Mr. Thompson's nose, um, yes, Mr. Thompson's head wound. Do you agree with this? I do not. I believe that this is consistent with the nosebleed that Thompson suffered earlier in the day. I'm directing your attention to exhibits C, D, and E. Can you explain the blood spatter on these, on these clothes? Yes. As you can see on the exhibits, all the blood is on the left side of Mr. Davidson's clothing. This is consistent to him standing to the right of Thompson when he was punched. Now, Dr. Lee, I'd like to direct your attention to the exhibits once more. Yes. Do you recognize exhibit F? Yes, this is a photograph of Davidson's bloody walking stick. Did you find any of, I'm sorry, strike that. Can you explain the numerous blood spatter marks in the defendant's walking stick? Yes, as you can see on the top, the blood spatters are smaller than those on the bottom. This is what you'd expect from blood falling from above onto an upright walking stick. Did you find any of Mr. Thompson's fingerprints on the walking stick? Yes, I did. Did you find any of Mr. Thompson's skin cells on the walking stick? Yes, I did. And now, did you find any of Mr. Thompson's skin, I'm sorry, did you find Mr. Tom Mr. Davidson's skin cells underneath Mr. Thompson's fingernails? Yes, I did. And how do you explain the presence of these skin cells? These skin cells likely survived from the confrontation at the farmer's market, as skin cells can stay under fingernails for four days. And did you, did you find any additional fingerprints on the walking stick? Yes, I did. There was a set of unknown fingerprints at the end of the walking stick, as if it were used as sort of a baseball bat. Now, do you recognize exhibit G? Yes, I do. This is a photograph of the tree branch found near the crime scene. Could this have been the murder weapon? Yes, it fits the size specifications and it contains enough blood to be the murder weapon. Did you find any fingerprints on the tree branch? I found partial prints, but I wasn't able to salvage them, as can be the case with rough surfaces such as the bark on the tree branch. Now, Dr. Morrison claims that the wounds on Mr. T Mr. Thompson's body are consistent with a right-handed attacker attacking from the front. Do you agree with this conclusion? This is correct, but the wounds on the uh, victim's temple, as well as the defensive wounds on the hands and wrists, are also consistent with the left-handed attacker attacking from behind. So, Dr. Lee, can anyone say for certain the handedness of the attacker? No, as the evidence is consistent with both a left-handed attacker from behind or a right-handed attacker from the front. And can anyone say for certain what was used to kill Mr. Thompson? No, there's not enough evidence to conclusively say which was the murder weapon. Can anyone say who killed Mr. Thompson? No, there's not enough evidence to conclude anyone as the murderer. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Your Honor, no further questions. Cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Dr. Lee. Good afternoon. I want to start with something you said on direct. You said that Thompson's fingerprints were found on the walking stick? I misspoke my mistake. There were a set of unknown fingerprints and Davidson's fingerprints. Well, those unknown fingerprints could have belonged to Thompson, right? They may have. Now, just to clarify, you were hired by the defense in this case? 
I often work with the police in order to give my testimony on my expert opinion in trials, yes. So you were hired by the defense in this case, right? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Relevance? Anything you want to say on Goes to bias, Your Honor. I think so. I'll allow it. Would you like to renew my objection to ask and answer? I don't believe so. Uh, if it is, it went right by me, so I'll have to All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Just to be clear, is it in evidence that Dr. Lee was hired by the defense? Yes. You used to be a medical examiner for the city of San Francisco, right? That's correct. So you know, years. excuse me, so you know that medical examiners perform autopsies? Yes, often. They conduct tests on forensic evidence? Yes. Just to be clear, you did not perform an autopsy in this case? No, I reviewed Dr. Morrison's. That's right. You are reliant on the findings of Dr. Morrison? Yes. You're rel you're, you are reliant on the testing done by Dr. Morrison, right? Yes, I am. On the body. So the only thing that's really different is not the evidence, but your conclusions? That's correct. I want to talk to you about your conclusions. Do you believe that the blood on Mr. Tom Mr. Davidson's clothes came from a nosebleed, right? That's correct, yes. So it must have been a very heavy nosebleed. Yes, it was described as a very heavy nosebleed. Blood must have gotten everywhere? Yes, that was what is, was described. Now, you're aware that the defendant had a bullhorn with him at the time of the nosebleed? That's correct. There was no blood on that bullhorn? There was not. Now, on direct examination, you said that the blood was exclusively on the left side of the defendant's clothing, right? That is correct, with the exception of a smear on the right side of Mr. Davidson's shirt. Exactly. There's a smear mark on Mr. Davidson's shirt. Yes that's not consistent with a nosebleed? Perhaps of the wiping of a stick of some sort? It is not consistent with a nosebleed? Not from the splatter from a nosebleed, no. You do believe that the walking stick could be the murder weapon in this case, right? It is a possibility. And you agree that if the walking stick was the murder weapon, the defendant could have been the murderer? He yes. could have been, yes. Nothing further. Any redirect? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Dr. Lee, if the walking stick was the murder weapon, who could have been the attacker? It could have been anyone, as there was a set of unknown fingerprints, as well as the defendants. So can anyone say for certain who the attacker was? Objection, yeah. Your Honor. Ask and answer. Mm -hmm. I think in view of your cross-examination, it's fair. Overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you have an opportunity to answer your question? No, I did not. My question. So no one can say for certain who the attacker was? No, there's not enough evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. May this witness please be excused? Yes. Thank you. You're excused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.